that's a concern for you? I, I just think that, uh, you know, with some of the freshmen, it's a long season, so they're just getting used to playing Division One. the physical aspect of it, the time demanding of it. And sometimes they're not always focused in practice, whereas the veterans kind of know. They know the time management. They know they've been through it. Uh, they're taking classes that they want to take. And, you know, I think in some respect, um, we, we've got to communicate better because then there's the assumption that, you know, the freshmen maybe should know this out of the other, even though it's the end of January and, and they're still learning. So, you know, I think with the communication getting better, the connection gets better. And it's getting better. It is. But there, there's been a little bit of it, you know, and you see it on the court with just in terms of our turnovers. Um, we expect somebody to be there and they're not there. Uh, help defense. You know, you expect that. And, you know, a lot of that is, is just youth and them, the younger people still figuring out, uh, not necessarily basketball, but all the other aspects of playing Division One basketball. And you see it. You really do. It's a long season for them. Is that, uh, does that tie into how you mentioned you were a little frustrated how they were practicing today? Or this yeah, you know, there's a couple that just get, you know, and I mentioned this in the press conference, they just get down on themselves. And, you know, I, I told them that they, they, there was an attitude that I felt, um, and maybe it's not a bad attitude, but it's just the part where they've got to pick themselves up better. Their teammates are trying, but they can't, they can't get down over little things. They've got to make sure that their, their teammates are going to pick them up, their coaches are going to pick them up, and making a mistake is not the end of the world. You know, I told them yesterday, don't let a failure deter you from an accomplishment. And, you know, it's the most important thing because if you put your head down on a mistake, you'll never see the accomplishments that are ahead. And, you know, we have some really good freshmen, and they're doing a very good job. It's just, uh, you know, for them, they feel like they should be doing better and they want to be perfect, and they can't be perfect. And they'll learn. They'll learn. So how do you get them to respond coming off of your last game? Well, you know, we've had some good practices, and that's what you needed. Uh, Wyoming forces you to communicate because they set so many screens. They're so well coached that they read your defense very well. So if you try to switch everything, they'll slip and curl and they'll get you out of it. Um, you know, I, I think uh, looking at last year's game, what we did, uh, looking what they've done so far in the league, um, you know, watching them play, we know their players, everybody is back. It's just the, the point of you have to stop them. You have to communicate. We have to switch when we're supposed to. We have to talk and, and do all the little things on defense. And then on offense, just keep that connection back again. Is there one key that's more important than another with this matchup? Well, I think just the communication is so important on defense. It's really important because Wyoming will run the clock down. If they don't get anything in transition, which they're very good at, they average 71 points a game, they don't get anything in transition, they will run the clock till about three or four seconds. And they'll either make the shot, if they miss and get a rebound, then you got to play the full 30 seconds again. And it's really important that we box out, we yell shot, and we rebound. Game like that last game obviously wasn't a, wasn't a shining moment. How, how do you approach it? I mean, do you guys study it a little bit, or do you just try to forget about it? Well, we, you have to study it. And, you know, we, we, we break down all our opponents. We'll watch the film, the good, the bad, and the ugly, um, after – you know, the next day before we move on to the next team. So, you know, we had some clips on San Diego State. We watched it. Uh, the kids understand. I think it's a learning tool. You don't watch it and you tell them, see, you made this mistake and you made this mistake. You watch the film and said, this is where we broke down and this is where we have to get better. And that's what we did. Then, you know, you move on to Wyoming, which is a completely different contrast than San Diego State is. Uh, and then you have to focus two days on them and, and get to work. Hi, Richard. They set screens for their shooters, and, and the right people take the right shots. They also do a tremendous job in transition. They're very patient, and they're very smart. So they don't take bad shots. They don't make dumb mistakes. Uh, they, they find each other very well. They've got a very good post player in Chandra Sewell. They've got very good perimeter players that can knock down the three and post you up, which they really love to do. And uh, they... Uh, they're a good team. They're a very good team. They're very patient. Are they running more and more moves? Well, they're shooting a lot of threes. I mean, and they, they score a lot of threes. So they're running about the same as they did. They'll find their spots in transition. If they have it open, they'll take it. If they get to the rim, they'll take it. If they, they uh, 
have a perimeter player or a post player at a wide open three, they'll take it. And then normally they'll hit it if you give them a wide open shot. So, you know, they can win in the 70s and they can win in the 40s. I mean, they're a very, very smart team and very patient. If we run back on defense and we give them nothing in transition, they'll take the whole clock and run offense. And that's how smart they are. They won't get impatient. And they're very good defensively? They are good defensively. Uh, you know, they, they'll, they'll do some different things, but there's nothing that we hadn't seen before. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, I mean, like anything else, we have to execute and take care of the ball. You know, Sewell in the post is very, very good. You know, they'll win with her getting four or six points, and they'll win with her getting 30 points. Um, she, she's the best rebounder in the conference, and uh, she's just really important. And then Kayla Woodard, um, Woodward, I believe, the number four, their perimeter player, is just she was an outstanding freshman last year. And she's picked up where she left off, and now she has help. So... Um, you know, you can't key on one or two people on them. They are just so good at what they do that if two or three people don't score, then somebody else is going to do it for them. Is that why Sewell is so effective because she has a good It is. And, you know, I, I equate her a lot to, like, Dion Marsh. You know, when Dion didn't get double teamed, she scored a ton of points. When she got double teamed, we had Katie Montgomery. You know, we had uh, Julie Briotti, uh, you know, we had Amy. We had, I mean, we had those players, Mandy Moore, I believe. Uh, we had those players who can knock down shots, and that was such a good and smart team. Sewell has the same supporting cast. So if she's one-on-one -on -one in the post, she's going to score. If she gets double teamed, she kicks it off to somebody who can shoot the three, and they're so effective doing that. Can you afford a double team? No, I mean, we're not going to. I mean, as, as of right now, I mean, you know, we, we got to get her out. I like our posts. I like what they do. Uh, I like, you know, their battle that they've been doing. I mean, we have a lot of posts that we can sub in, and, uh, and we'll do that. All righty.